Yo, what's going on, Raider Nation? What's going on, YouTube? This is your boy, Byron Live 95 coming at y'all with another video. And today, I wanted to talk about how this video right here will change how you view Derek Carr. I want to go over three main things that happened in the 2021 season, show it to you guys, show you guys the evidence, and you guys can take it however you want to. But hey, before you start this video, hit the like button, help me out with the YouTube algorithms. I would really appreciate it. But anyways, let's get on with the video. So one of the things Things that I want to talk about with Derek Carr in the 2021 season is first off you have to look at the coaching and play calling let's look at that first off now under head coach John Gruden Derek Carr will finally get some stability of a consistent play caller something he's been needing his whole NFL career now Derek Carr would improve under John Gruden's West Coast offense every single year that he was there and in those three seasons with John Gruden Derek Carr would throw for three straight or 4,000 yard season and in the last two seasons through less than 10 interceptions in 2019 and 2020 along with improving his QBR every single season that he was there now in Derek Carr's first three years with head coach John Gruden he would throw for 12,206 passing yards 67 touchdowns to 27 picks and completing 68% of his passes while under this offense now this duo looked like they were headed in the right direction now they're going into year Year four and everything was going to be great and we were going to see Derek Carr take over we're going to see John Gruden at another level and both of these guys were expected to have breakout seasons in 2021 welcome into our programming John Gruden is out in Las Vegas he has submitted his resignation three days after a Washington Post report exposed an email back in 2011 that he sent to Washington executive Bruce Allen describing Demoris Smith uh, in racist language, and apparently that was the tip of the iceberg. For more on this story, we're joined now by Tom Pelissero and our NFL Network insider Ian Rappaport. Tom, what more can you tell us about how all this unfolded? Omar, this really played out within the past couple of hours with the Las Vegas Raiders. John Gruden had had a variety of discussions over several days since Friday when the Wall Street Journal first published that email from 2011 about Demora Smith. Then this evening, within the past couple of hours, the New York Times published other emails that also had been provided by the league to the Las Vegas Raiders. Now, John Gruden would step down as the head coach just five games into the 2021 season which i'm going to do a whole nother video on that later on this team would then decide to make the special teams coordinator rich Basaccia as the head coach a person who's never had any head coaching experience and not only that greg olson will be his offensive coordinator now granted he was Derek carr's offensive coordinator in 2014 in his rookie year but still that's a lot to throw at a quarterback like hey your head coach is gone and since he calls the majority of the place we're gonna hire somebody who hasn't had any head coaching experience and we're gonna take you away from that office now granted it's still John Gruden's plays but it's not John Gruden calling that so this is just one of the first things that Derek Carr would have to deal with in the 2021 NFL season now let's look at the second thing that Derek Carr would have to face and that would be his receiving core and his weapons now going into the 2021 season Carr would have his two main receiving options which was Hunter Renfro, who's arguably one of the best route runners in the game right now. And of course, Darren Waller, which is considered a top three tight end. And he was coming off a Pro Bowl year in 2020. Now, the Raiders had a promising young wide receiver core with wide receivers coming out of Alabama and South Carolina. And they're also bringing in some veteran wide receivers in free agency after losing Nelson Aguilar, who was the leading receiver for the team in 2020. Now, one of the first things would be be that Josh Brown one of the wide receivers that we brought in he would be asked to be released before the season even started due to a lack of playing time and then it wouldn't stop there as Willie Sneed one of our wide receivers would also ask to be released after you know not getting a lot of playing time in this offense and that couldn't have come at a worse time so now two of these wide receivers that asked to be released due to 
you know, lack of touches, lack of playing time. I understand that. But they asked for it at the complete wrong time because then Henry Ruggs, which would be our star upcoming wide receiver in last year's draft in 2020, didn't have a great rookie season. But in his sophomore season, the upside was great great we saw him improving we saw him take it to the next level and start to show major improvement from his rookie season and would slowly start making a name for himself in this offense in this news out of las vegas overnight what's the latest with that uh absolutely avo avoidable and tragic situation with henry ruggs the henry ruggs k is now a former raiders receiver in the wee hours of the morning the las vegas raiders released rug so he is now no longer a member of their team he's going to go through waivers although I, that's not going to matter no one is going to claim him so he is now going to be a free agent facing far different future than anything that has to do with football he was booked into clark county detention center yesterday afternoon on a charge of dui resulting in death also reckless driving no bail until he sees a judge he should have his first court appearance today now this is all uh, from a DUI charge resulting in death from a collision at 3.39 in the morning in Vegas. Uh, he remained on the scene and did show signs of impairment. According to the police, they are awaiting a toxicology report. And, and as far as his future... Now, after Henry Ruggs would be released, now you have to look at the other options that we had on offense. Now, for Darren Waller, who was the pro bowler last year, and like I said, he was in that discussion of top tight ends in the NFL, Darren Waller wouldn't put up his pro bowl type numbers that he did from 2020, and he did have a lot of injuries, and he did miss six games due to those injuries. And then you look at the other young wide receiver core with Brian Edwards and Zay Jones. Now, they would put up decent numbers, but nothing really spectacular or something that would jump off the chart. But the main bright spot in the receiving core that year would be Hunter Renfro. Hunter Renfro would have a 1,000 yards receiving the first time we've had that since Michael Crabtree and Amari Cooper, and he would break some receiving records in the Raiders franchise as well. So once again, Derek has to deal with the coaching change, then he has to deal with what's going on with his wide receivers, and then his wide receivers are asked to be let go, his Pro Bowl tight end is getting injured and isn't putting up those numbers that he quite had from the previous previous year and your star wide receiver has to get released because of something dumb he did and the third thing I want to talk about is the O-line problems in the running game that Derek Carr also had to deal with now just from the beginning of the season now our left guard Richie Incognito he would be rumored to be coming back and that he would be off injuries and he would later return but as we all know he never did return so that made us have to put Denzel Good at left guard but that wouldn't even last that long because the first game of the season he would go out with an injury and he would have to be placed on IR for the rest of the season in which we would have to put in our 2020 fourth round draft pick John Simpson in at left guard now on the right side of the ball our rookie right tackle that we drafted this year in the 2021 NFL draft was struggling at the right tackle position so now we had to move our right tackle who's a rookie by the way so I'm not gonna get on him too much but our rookie and had to move him to right guard and then at the right tackle position, we had to put in Brandon Parker, which was our backup right tackle. And like I said, we just drafted a right tackle to take care of that. So now we're doing all this shuffling on this offensive line. But it wasn't all bad because at the left tackle position, Colton Miller was holding everything down. And at center would be Andre James, who had struggled in the beginning of the season. But as the season went along, played very well. So then you have to throw in that with the offensive line problems. And it doesn't get any better because then you have to look at the run game. It's ranked 24th in the NFL. The Raiders were supposed to have a great running back combination with Josh Jacobs and Kenyon Drake. But Josh Jacobs would spend most of the season battling through injuries and struggled to run the ball up until later in that season. And then you had Drake that we brought in from free agency. He would also have to go on IR. And we didn't use him the best either. We struggled, we found, we, we struggled to find ways to put him into the offense to help us out and he would eventually go on IR and not only that our fullback our captain he goes out on IR during the season as well so let's look at this from Derek Carr's perspective and despite having a lack of all this and all the chaos that was going throughout this season Carr threw for 4,804 passing yards fifth in the NFL when it came to passing now does Derek Carr have some flaws obviously does he have to improve on the interceptions yes of course does he have to improve on holding on to the ball more when he's getting 
getting sacked? Yes, absolutely. But, but despite all of this, how many quarterbacks do you know that you can just take? And there's 32 starting quarterbacks in the NFL. How many of those quarterbacks that you could pick them up and throw them into Derek Carr's situation and they can still succeed? And the answer is there's not a lot. And I think that you should look at Derek Carr, look at everything he's gone through. Now, I'm not making all the excuses for him, but all of that that happened during 2021. And despite all that, Derek Carr found some way to lead this team to the playoffs when a lot of people doubted us. So I hope after everything I've said, hopefully this changes how you view Derek Carr. Thank you guys for watching the video, man. Let me know what you think down in the comment section. Like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, Byron Live 95 Also, please do me a huge favor and go on to my second channel and subscribe to Byron Live Interviews. And if you guys can, if you can make a small donation, because I can't monetize off of these videos, obviously, due to copyright material. But anyways, Raider Nation, let me know what you guys think. And did this video change how you view Derek Carr?